I wanted to see if ChatGPT was able to solve three relatively simple programming problems without creating any security vulnerabilities. I am so confident in how bad ChatGPT is at programming that if there are no security vulnerabilities in all three of these, I will quit my job. And to spice it up, if all of them have security vulnerabilities, then we'll do something special at the end of the video. Now, the assertion with ChatGPT is that it is going to take all of our jobs as software developers and we will all be living on the street and the AI will be running the universe. Now, the reason I don't think ChatGPT will actually replace coders is because the code that ChatGPT knows how to produce is just code that it's seen other people write on places like Stack Overflow, Wikipedia, and places like that. All because ChatGPT has seen this code does not mean the code is inherently safe. Let's test out our first prompt and see how safe ChatGPT's code is. Now, the first prompt is I want ChatGPT to program for me an HTTP server. That's a server that serves files on the internet. When you go to a website, the protocol HTTP is handled in the server that you're talking to, and it delivers you the web page that you see. Okay, so ChatGPT did render some code here. Let's take this code out of ChatGPT and put it into our VM and see if it even compiles. This is code run, and can we use it to run an HTTP server? Let's try it out. All right, so we're in our VM now. We're gonna vim http.c. We're gonna copy and paste our code again. We've written no code. I am just taking what ChatGPT gave us and putting it into our editor. Now we're gonna compile it. It should be as simple as gcc taco http http.c. Moment of truth, it compiles. Wow, that's actually crazy. So it compiles, no errors, no warnings, flat out just works. So let's see if we can't serve the file within the file dog and it's going to say ao what dat dog doing we're going to save that file and now if i run this server oh i can't bind to that port i need to be root hold on let's do sudo http running ai code as root very safe cool so it's listening on port 80 it works now if i go to a new window if i w get localhost and i look for the file dog Ooh, I get the file dog, and if I cat it, it should say, Ayo, what that dog doing? So the code is functional, it does work. Let's take it a level deeper and see if there are any security vulnerabilities in it. The code creates a socket in C to serve as the server, that's easy enough. The scary part's gonna happen when we start reading data off the network. So basically what's happening here, it accepts a socket and it handles the request. All of the juicy code is gonna be in handling the request. This is where the server could get it wrong. We have the buffer for our request, we have the file name that we could get, uh, and then we read in the request from the network, and then we scan F. Oh, there we go. Okay, le leave a comment below if you see the, vulner the vulnerability here. So this is actually a security vulnerability known as a buffer overflow, where we extract from the request an arbitrary file name the user controls into a file name buffer. However, we don't specify the length of the buffer in this character format string here, so because of that, we can give it more than buffer size inputs in the file name that we're requesting and crash our server. So we can look in the code that ChatGPT gave us for the buffer size. Buffer size is 1024. So let's see if we can make a 10, we'll call it 1050 byte file name and see if that crashes it. We take all of this Python goodness and I'm going to request localhost slash that amount. It would probably help if I started my server. On the server is root, listening port 80, run it again. Oh, interesting. The file is not found on the server. Hmm, interesting. So I can't trigger the bug, but that's definitely a bug there. Let's figure out why I can't trigger that bug in the code. Oh, interesting. Because it only reads a buffer size off the network, I can't actually overflow. Like I take my outer value that has buffer size and then I copy that into a smaller buffer. Or, and then I copy that into a buffer of the same size. So this is a buffer overflow condition. The problem is they got lucky and they just happened to make it so that the outer buffer was the same size as the inner buffer. Again, I'm going to call this a security vulnerability because a person could take this code and expand on it. And this line right here gives user control of a buffer without specifying the length. So zero of one for now, ChatGPT. Let's move to the next one. Okay, prompt number two. I want ChatGPT to create for me a TLV server. When you're passing binary data from a server to a client or vice versa, it's very common to encode that data as a TLV. That's a type or a tag the length and the value. The way you implement this could have very, very dangerous security vulnerabilities if you allow the user to control the length field because then that could cause buffer overflows in your code. So let's run this and see what code ChatGPT gives us. Okay, interesting, the code looks pretty normal. We bind to a particular port. Uh, it takes the port as input on the command line. We listen, 
and then we read some data from the user and then parse it into a TLV. So let's pull this into our VM and see if it compiles. Let's do it right now. Okay, we got the code all vimmed up. Let's get it all compiled. GCC, TACO, TLV, TLV.C, baby. And we compile, easy. Again, so again, I'm very surprised that so far there have been no errors, no warnings from code from ChatGPT. Because actually in preparing for this video, I made some personal projects that I wrote that broke in ChatGPT that like straight up would not compile. They were syntactically incorrect in C. So this is very impressive. Um, TLV and it takes port to listen on. So we'll do one, two, three, four. I'm actually curious if I netcat locally, if I can get any data. So we'll say netcat localhost one, two, three, four. And if I go like this, do I get any data? So tag 97 length 115 value as dash dash. Okay. So it actually does work. That's pretty interesting. Um, the fact that one vulnerability I'm already kind of seeing here is that it expected length 115 for me and I didn't send it 115 and there was no parsing errors here. There should be a feature where if I send it 115 as the length and it doesn't get 115, it should discard that packet. So let's see what the code does and see if the code has any vulnerabilities in it. So this is all pretty boilerplate. We, we bind to our server. We listen, read all the good stuff. Um, so this is where it's actually parsing our request. So buffer of I++, I don't like this at all. Doing I++ and not having like a hard cursor that you're checking is a little dirty. Uh, so it reads the type, it reads the length, and it reads the value. So in real life, if you had a binary protocol you're working with, you would say like, if tag equals, you know, hello packet, do this thing. And if, hell, you know, packet equals goodbye packet, then do this thing. So that's that's where you'd use this. Oh, this is vulnerable as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mem copy is a copy operation, right? Buffer overflows happen when you allow the user to control arbitrary data. Here, we give the user direct control of the length value. So by doing this, the length value comes off the network and then I pass it into a mem copy. So this is 100% vulnerable to buffer overflow. I could send it a bad value of length that doesn't match the packet and you know bad things can happen from there. Also, it's casting a length, which is a unsigned in off the network to a size T for mem copy. So there's a lot of issues with this code. Zero of two open AI. I don't know, man, I'm, I'm a little nervous right now. Let's see what my final prompt has in store for us. Let's get into it. And for my final prompt, I present to you dark mode users, cover your eyes. A hey, my homework. Just kidding. I invented a fake school. USU, university school, university. USU. USU, where CS481 is a class where you have to create advanced code network programs, not redundant at all. In this prompt, I ask you to make a better optimized file access protocol, better referred to as BOFA. I'm going to give this prompt to ChatGPT, and I want to see if it can not only dissect this prompt from my homework, but create the code that does this problem in a way that is both functional and secure. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say. All right, I'm literally just going to copy the problem statement. I'm not going to show the score because it might think that it's homework. Ooh, okay, ChatGPT, you think you're better than me. All right, take this, copy it. Oh, it it thinks that Bofa is a real protocol, and it's like I don't know how to do that. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna ask it to do it and say that it's not called the Bofa protocol. I was like, dude, there's no way. Yeah, okay, it's doing the hello num TLV. Message length, message data. Okay. Uh, there. I think I see a vulnerability already. All right. Let's pull it into the uh, into my VM and see how it looks. Let's 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 see if it compiles. Oh, it didn't generate the whole thing. Can't get ChatGPT to actually finish the code. This prompt may have been too complicated for it. Ha! Strike one, ChatGPT. But I'm already seeing a bunch of gross stuff with this code. So let's pull this code into my VM and I'll talk about all the issues I have with it. I'm seeing a bunch of bad code smell issues, and I've already found one security vulnerability. So let's talk about that. At first initial glance, this code may look pretty good, but there are some pretty nasty things in this code that a new programmer may not see. And again, this is my whole point with ChatGPT. It just, it makes really bad code that tricks new programmers into thinking that it's right. And then they've made catastrophic mistakes and not only will reinforce bad habits, but it'll just make them produce bad code if they, if they depend on using that tool. So first of all, if you look at this piece of code, if you're a senior here, you're probably throwing up in your mouth right now. Tons, 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 tons of magic values. This code may functionally be correct, but these magic values make it so that if you need to debug or add to this code functionally, you cannot reproduce this code at all. You have no idea what any of these numbers do. Why does six get you a message type? Why does seven get you a message length? Now, there could be the argument that if the protocol is spec that way, then six and seven are always the magic values. Okay, fine, but what if BOFA 2.0 comes out and now it's at value seven and eight? Now your entire protocol is screwed and you're gonna spend hours refiguring out why this code works the way that it does. And then on top of that, 
It's doing a bunch of mem copies. It's reading the lengths of the TLVs off the network. And then here we have the final blunder. We read into the message data buffer, a local stack buffer, the message length length that comes off the network. It's the exact same bug as before, where we let the user control the length of a mem copy, creating a buffer overflow condition and likely code that can get hacked. Now, as the kids would say, when I was trying to learn to play basketball in high school, <laughs> scoreboard and like i said because chat gpt not only lost but lost embarrassingly zero of three in the security vulnerability department the special part of the video happens now not gonna lie i didn't think we'd get this far all right hit subscribe just kidding it's a fish